Hello, world! Dave here, and I got a new project for you. Consider it a side project for now, but once Xenoblade completes, I'll be running it into full force. Welcome to Let's Play XCOM Enemy Unknown! So yeah, XCOM Enemy Unknown, this is a game I picked up on a Steam sale for a lark, and it is probably up there with my game of the year. It's probably not going to be my game of the year, but it's up there, and it's very, very likely contender, and I love this game to pieces. Then again, I am a bit of a strategy nut. I loved Fire Emblem, I love Advance Wars, played Final Fantasy Tactics if hand selected, and I never got to play the original Final Fantasy Tactics because I never owned a PlayStation. I also never owned a PC that had the original XCOM, but eh, who cares? XCOM Enemy Unknown it has been fantastic. So, what am I going to do, be doing for this Let's Play? Well then, how about we just dive right into it? For starters, let's turn on Iron Man. Because this is not, if you're not playing Iron Man, you're not playing XCOM. And next, classic difficulty. I beat the game on normal recently, and it was super tense. Super, super tense. That last mission is long, and is grueling. It, it kept me on my knees, but... Oh man, was it worth it at the end. I also only beat the game with only like 15 deaths, although three of those were manda mandatory because I was playing with the tutorial on, and two of those were because of a bug. And the average is about nine deaths on uh, Iron Man normal, so I think I did okay. I think I did about, pa uh, about par. So, Iron Man Classic. I hear Classic's much tougher. I'll be kind of uh, sharing my strategies that I went through on normal and the general ideas of what to do but I'm still but this and I kind of understand the general mechanics but considering that XCOM does a lot of randomizes a lot of things there's a good chance I won't know exactly what I'm getting myself into so this should be fun let ready folks let's dive in and oh yeah by the way you may call me Commander Smith you'll be hearing that a lot in this series let's go I do like this little intro here. It's like a nice little quote from Arthur C. Clarke. And, I mean, you know, yeah, enjoy your literature. And if, in a game about aliens, it's very fitting. Oh, yeah. Spoilers. There'll be aliens. I mean, this, I mean like I said, this there's another game called UFO Enemy Unknown. You kind of expect aliens here. So, the opening cinematic is certainly an interesting one to behold. We get to watch the beginnings of the invasion, strange things popping up, strange artifacts popping, falling out of the sky, nothing out of the ordinary, people taking cell phone pictures because they're stupid, and then one idiot has to go and touch the thing and poison gas starts spewing. Of course, you know, again, general human, general human populace, and did he trip or is he getting sucked in? I have no idea. And of course, there's, we will probably not be seeing more of that guy. Or we might in another cutscene. Also, I should note that this tutorial has a bit of a story beat added to it, but I'm not going to be doing that. But it's one that they call back to later. But honestly, the tutorial is pretty dull and a slog, and I really hate it. And besides, I'll, I'll teach you everything you need to know, so don't worry, don't worry. But now, the XCOM project begins. Hello, Commander. In light of the recent extraterrestrial incursion, this Council of Nations has convened to approve the activation of the XCOM project. I'm ready to serve. You have been chosen to lead this initiative to oversee our first and last line of defense. You think you'd have more lines of defense? Your efforts will have considerable influence on this planet's future. I am aware. We urge you to keep that in mind as you proceed. <sighs> yes, I know. Fave the world it weighs on my shoulders for the second time. Eh. Good luck, Commander. Let's get this sucker underway, folks. Our first mission will be an interesting one. It definitely won't be the same one for my tutorial run, but it'll be interesting nonetheless. But before we do start, before we do start, we have to start choose where we set up our initial base of operations. For each base of operation, for wherever we set up our initial base of operations, we get a nice little bonus. For starting in North America, we get cheaper aircraft and aircraft weapons. 
which is pretty nice. It, you, it helps to have a nice stockpile of aircraft, from my experience. Starting in Europe, you get cheaper workshops and laboratories to get, which means you will get more. You will be able to build, have more scientists on hand to help speed up your research, and more engineers to make sure that you can actually build the stuff that your scientists research. Eventually, that kind of becomes pointless. I really see no reason to start in Europe. Asia gives you future combat, which gives you cheaper projects in the foundry and the, and makes the officer training school cheaper. This is stuff that this is stuff that you do eventually want to buy, and I will, and it is definitely a consideration for me. Starting in South America, autopsies and interrogations are completed instantly. This is really nice because it let, lets you just get burned through the. Means you can, uh, you don't have to set aside your other research to get to these. But I don't know, those complete somewhat quickly, and then, eh, I don't know. The bonuses you get for autopsies and interrogations are nice though, so you know, I give it that much. And then, all in, monthly XCOM funding increased by 30%. That is also very, very solid. So, between me... So, as far as I'm concerned, there's only three choices to where to start. North America, which is where I started my first one. Africa, because, well, extra cash. And Asia, because the Foundry and Officer Training School are things that you want to get done ASAP. So... Where do I start? Well, since I already did North America, and there's an achievement for doing all five, it's between Africa and Asia. I think eight Africa is probably the most straightforward to go with. We won't lose. We can get the other bonuses later on, but I want to start with the all in. So let's go with that. I missed out on that my first run, so I want to make sure I get my all in. And we're dropping you just inside the Egyptian border. We've picked up a local broadcast indicating alien activity within a major metropolitan area. We should get down there and eliminate any hostiles. So this is going to be our general mission structure and sort. We're going to see missions like these a lot, where you just pretty much kill all the enemies. Uh, this first map, if to play the tutorial, the first mission is very scripted. Here, it's they're going to have. A, it's just going to be a random kill all aliens mission. So let's just get it right into it. Touchdown, and we touchdown, and the troops get deployed, and we have, uh, and we are green. Strike one. This is central. You are free to engage all hostile contacts in the AO. Don't take any chances. Don't take any chances, indeed. Wow, you de uh, and normally you start with six HP on each of your squad members. Here you start with five, and guys can knock you down to hit you for four. Usually, that's gonna kind of suck. Anyway, our one thing you learn very quickly in XCOM, if you are not in cover, you are dead. That is not a joke. You are, if you are not in cover, you are get dead. It's just like any good strategy game. If you do not mitigate damage somehow, you're going to be in a world of hurt. So let's go ahead and uh, find a decent spot to kind of park our dudes here. Uh, we don't want them to be too... I mean, our, we can start off being affording to have our guys being a little cluttered. It's perfectly fine. But later on, we're going to want to spread them out a bit. I mean, our early enemies aren't going to have any much, anything much in the way of area of effect damage, so we can probably afford to just park them behind these two cars. And use Overwatch, so that way if the enemies come charging at us, we go ahead and get free shots at them. It's... I use Overwatch... I mean, Overwatch isn't the greatest thing in the world. I mean, as they show right here, gives you a name penalty, but sometimes you get a lucky kill, so, and that's never a bad thing. And now it's the alien's turn, as indicated by the alien activity and blah blah blah. So, aliens haven't really done much. It's up to us to kind of switch through here, so let's go ahead, move up slightly. And, okay, we can just overwatch here. Uh, I'm gonna have to dash if I'm gonna ha find any cover, and that's not usually, and that's usually a bad thing, I wanna say. So, let's dash to... Well, if we're gonna dash, we might as well dash fo as far as we can. X-ray spotted. Alien life on Earth. We're witnessing something never before seen in recorded history. Alright, so there's our first three uh, hostiles. And, uh... The game decided to glitch out and park my guy on a rooftop when I specifically told him not to. He's gonna get killed. 
Oh no, wait, the game's just glitching graphically. He's still considered parked where I parked him. Alright now, so who do I have available? Smith? Erickson? These guys are going to get renamed eventually. I have a little theme in mind, albeit that means all my all my lady ladies are going to have new names, but you know, I can't really... I can't really think of anything else to do here. So, how do I position my men? I want to make sure that they are fully in cover. That they are in, in cover. I kind of don't want to dash because, but at the same time, I uh, if the, basically dashing means you use both your moves on movement. You both your attack moves on movement here, and that's not great. You always want to make sure you have something to go on here. So, hmm. Um, can't find a good spot to park. I don't like this at all. You know what? Scooch over just to, a little to the left in Overwatch. And we'll have you... They should not... They These, these are basic enemies. They're not going to be doing anything too difficult, though they do have a little buff that they can use on each other. So, hmm, they probably, if I move up here, I think they won't get a shot, but there's also a good chance they will. Uh, so, yeah, we'll go here. If they can see us and we overwatch, they won't move in too close, because they don't want us to get that free shot. So let's see what their move is. Okay, they're gonna do the mind meld buff, and that guy gets extra accuracy and extra health for the turn. And he's gonna Overwatch. So the mind meld seems like it's just over offsetting the over the Overwatch aim penalty. This is gonna be a little tricky. How do I how do I make do of this? Parker, you are not supposed to be down there. Okay, that only has a 45% chance to hit. I kind of don't want to move. I If he sees us move, we will get shot by Overwatch. That's the thing. And he's going to have an accuracy bonus to offset the accuracy penalty of Overwatch. And there's going to be a whole thing there. So that's kind of bad. Can I lob in a grenade? I have grenades. No, no. Grenade it does not reach far enough. It might set off the car, it might cause the car to explode, but I don't want to chance that, so... Hmm... So we won't... No, exit, escape out. I think that, I think at some point we're gonna have to set off that overwatch. The question is, where and how? Well, honestly, you know what, what I think I want to do is maybe... Dash... Well, I, yeah, it's going to be a dash up. Dashing is usually not a good idea, but sometimes you have to make do. Oh, shit. They're sending us on a six on four from the start. Yeah, they really do ramp up in class right here. Oh, boy. And my guy is completely vulnerable. Huh. This is fun. This is fun. All right, so how do I do this? How do I keep her safe. She dashed up there. I think I want to walk back over here and keep her in line of sight with Overwatch. We'll move him slightly up. Overwatch. And I think I want to move around the back here. Now, can we not have him climb up top? Yeah, he's dead. Fire over here. That looks like two overwatches. Alright, that was pretty bad, and he took damage. That's not, not a good thing. That means he's going to have to sit the next mission out. Probably. Probably. It depends on the time frame between missions. They're, they they have kind of sort of a real-time clock. I'm taking fire! Alright, so... Vehicle on fire! Uh-oh. Well, at least they actually alerted me of vehicles on fire here. I've had a, plenty of missions where they don't. Okay, so let's see. He's behind. We have a guy behind that vehicle. If we take out the guy who initiated the mine mill, that means that they both die. That both 
that both aliens die, so and we get a little two for one there. Oh, they can't say we didn't try with that Overwatch there. Hmm. I'm taking fire. Plus side though, they're clustered together pretty tight. I could probably get in a decent grenade. They're also all ain't they're also focusing fire on the same fire. person here, so. I normally don't grenades they kind of uh, have a little drawback since you know you can't don't always get that there's a good chance that both that the the guys that you're actually aiming with don't don't go up there. You're just gonna set off the overwatch. The pathing in this game. Duh. Oh well. If I move up here, I think I can go ahead and lob a grenade in. The grenades do guaranteed damage, and they also hit in an area of effect, so that's usually a good... So that's okay. The biggest bonus is that they destroy cover, but right now, that's really not important. He's go She's going to eat an overwatch or two. Ouch. Not something I want to do, but unfortunately the game wouldn't let me do elsewise. So let me see here. Can I lob in a decent grenade? I know there is a couple behind the porta potty, so I want to hit both porta potties because I forget exactly where, and I think that should. Yes, let's try this. I don't remember exactly where in line of sight they were, but one was behind a porta potty. Actually, no, let's make sure that the area around the porta potty is covered. Grenade out! Nice lob, and. Commander, you may want to instruct your men to exercise restraint when using explosives. Yeah, yeah, I know that. While certainly effective at killing aliens, they also destroy the artifacts we're hoping to recover from the bodies. Just something to consider. The artifacts do come into play for the. Like I mentioned research earlier, they come into play for that aspect of the game. So it's something you do want to consider. Hold on a second. Let's get this let's get this girl away from the flaming car. Flaming car means that that thing will explode and kill her. So let's not have that. Over to this car, I think. Well, we really can't find any better cover. So this car seems like a good spot. And... No visuals. Overwatch. Uh, we'll move up here, I think. Overwatch. And let's move him out a bit. He has visual on a guy, 45%, and it, it's someone that's doing a mind meld. That was probably what I was trying to grenade earlier. Can I throw a grenade in? Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no. So... Normally, I don't take chances that are below 50, but for the two for one, I'll give it a shot. Yep, saw that coming. Target still up. Yep, like I said, that car exploded. Could have killed her. Exploding cars are no joke. I've lost men to, to exploding cars. Okay, so he's gonna Overwatch. He's gonna Overwatch, I think. Oh no, he's trying for a flanking shot, I think. Is that all you got? Did destroy some cover, but I think we're mostly fine. So let me see here. I have no shots from here. If I move up slightly, maybe I'll have a shot. Or I can move back here and try for it. He's not behind cover, though. Well, he's behind partial cover. There's a difference between partial and full cover. You can notice by the shields uh, which cover is better... You get more. You get better evasion out of out of uh, full cover than partial cover, but partial cover is better than no cover. So let's see here. If I move up a skosh, yep, that gets me a lot of dudes. And 65, 54, 28. Let's try the 64 chance to hit. Boom. Bye -bye. There's someone there that's been Their mind -like. weapons appear to self-destruct when the operator dies. We should look closely for any fragments that could be salvaged for our own development programs. Yeah, that, again, that's what they they mentioned earlier. The 
that you can that you can research and get stuff from that. So you know that's kind of how it, how it goes. So let's move uh, this guy up. His name's gonna be changed later, like I said. So 45, 25, 25. I think tw that other 25 is the one doing the uh, mine mill, but the odds are too low. Can I get a grenade in? Yeah, I'm close enough for a grenade, but it's not a grenade on a guy that I want on the guy on the chance for a two for one. Actually, it'd be a three for one because I'd also because hopefully I'd get the 45% chance guy here. But you know, we'll make it, give it a shot. Let's go, go, go! Boom! Taken care of. Okay, so that's two guys dead, and we need uh, there's four more. Hmm. Can't find any good. Can't find any good cover. I'll have to dash in order to get that. So if I'm gonna dash, I'm gonna make my dashes count. So we'll go to this full cover back here. All right, and she and Smith has a shot here, but uh, I kind of want to move to different cover because cover is directional. Cover is directional. If you get if they get caught off guard from a different from a direction that you're not covered, they're gonna get a aim bonus and a critical hit chance bonus so that and that is no good so we'll try we'll try going moving from this cover to this cover that should protect me from this guy 45 percent chance to hit these are not good odds but i might as well take them yep target still up so now it's evenly matched except and that guy's gonna mind meld Really? You're vulnerable! You're pinned down, man! Why are you mind melding? Okay, and he's going on Overwatch. And our mind meldy. Going for a kill, but trying to go for a kill, but not much luck. Alright, so let's see here. Can I move closer and get a decent shot in? Yes. I don't want to jump the wall though. That though that'll give him the bonus for uh, for me being in bad cover. So we'll move up here. I think this works. Still have visual. Still same accuracy chance. You know what? Grenade. I know. I know our little German scientist friend that we just met told us not to do this, but I can't say no to a two. There we go. I mean, we're losing, we're losing currency that we can use to upgrade our stuff. But uh, sometimes you just gotta take chances like that. Sometimes you just gotta to quote Miss, the quote uh, the Magic School Bus. Sometimes you just gotta take chances, make mistakes, and get messy. So, hmm. I think if I scooch over here, yes, I got visual and still full cover. So, 45% chance to hit. Still not good, but might as well go for it. Nope. But I am in full cover. No way that just happened. So let me see. I'm trying to remember how many have I killed. I think I've killed four? Three or four. So that means there's one or two left. They're not going to give me more than that for this mission. So I feel like I'm in a good spot. Let's... Scotia her over to here. No visual, so we'll overwatch. She has a shot. 45% chance... He has a shot, sorry. Go for it. And, Adjusting sight. and we miss. So it's Alien's turn. Who, what happens? They take a shot on the guy that's... Down one man. Oh, shh! Wow. Yeah, like I said, critical hit chances are a big edge in this game. This is the first time... I and first mission, first death. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. All right, yay. Uh, you know what? So, how do I resolve this issue? What first mission, first death? On uh, Iron Man Classic, you are a bitch. I kind of want to make sure that I can get this going, but moving from let's see, I'd be moving from full cover on one side to partial cover on two sides. I think that's a fair cop. And I got him flanked for the accuracy bonus and critical hit bonus. Go for it! Damn it! Uh, this will happen every now and then. And you know what? My, can I move in and get a shot? 
no shot. I might as well just reload instead of overwatching here. And we'll just move in. No shot. Probably not going to see anyone move in, so I'm just going to over reload. Your primary weapons do have ammo. It's unlimited ammo, but you got to reload the clips every now and then. Oh! We need emergency evac! Now, damn it! Now! Yeah, god damn this... God damn... That's XCOM, baby! <laughs> so, um, yeah, you probably just noticed that she suffered a little status effect called panic. Basically, that means that she spends her turn... That the moment she gets panicked, she spends her turn right then and does random shit. And in this case, it was not good. She just pretty much hunkered down for more defense. Not what I want, especially when we have someone running here. Someone that's alive and a dangerous threat. So, move in. Neither of us have visual on each other. We're just going to overwatch. Two deaths on my first mission. Not fun. So, and they didn't move anywhere that we could have seen them. So, that's not good. So, two deaths already. This is not great. I mean, they're just rookies, but generally, I tr still try to avoid deaths. I mean, the reason I was so successful on my first run was because I had a full team of fully promoted dudes. And in this case, I mean, fully leveled, fully promoted, whatever term you want to use. In this case, we're not going to have that from our starting squad. It's going to look like the tutorial mission where you lose everyone but one guy. On the plus side here, we get a guy that's flanked. What an idiot. All right. Go for the increased crit chance. Boom! He's down. Good work out there, Strike One. If I may, Commander, the labs are on high alert. Teams are standing by for your orders. We can begin researching the newly recovered artifacts immediately. Thank you, uh, strange German lady who I've never met before. So let's just head back to base, and then we can go ahead, and our dudes will get promotions, and we will honor the fallen. Because, you know, that's kind of something that happens a lot in this game. At, like I said, that's XCOM, baby. So! Let's just get dive right in and uh, meet, the t meet the team that will be running our headquarters. Welcome to XCOM HQ, Commander. I'm Central Officer Bradford. Hello, Bradford. My role in this project is twofold. Providing tactical support for our field operations and keeping you briefed on the current situation. My efforts should allow you to focus on the bigger issues at hand. Speaking of which... We have a soldier waiting for a promotion in the barracks. I'll let you get to it. Thank you, Bradford. You are dismissed. So... <laughs> now, welcome to the home base. No one was expecting this. They were some of our best. I wish there was more we could have done. Yeah. Like I said, welcome to our home base. This is not just going to be a game, little game of chess, sort of, kind of. There's also going to be... Shall we say... There's also going to be some micromanagement of behind the scenes at XCOM, uh, at XCOM headquarters. We will be doing a lot of that. But first, let's get some promotions going here. We have uh, we have a promotion for our, for Igor, who shall be renamed soon. He's going to become a sniper. Bradford, tell us the role of the sniper. Our snipers specialize in dealing massive amounts of damage from afar. But without sufficient training, they're vulnerable in close combat situations. So we get... So our snipers... Yeah, you... Snipers are snipers. They are pretty much what you expect a sniper to be. Long range. The snipe with the sniper rifle, you cannot move and shoot. But they, but as you notice, everyone carries a sidearm. So there's he still has that as an option for worst case scenarios when he needs to reposition. So he starts off with a little skill called headshot. Gets some bonus. Gets him a bo crit bonus. It's all about making sure he's carefully positioned. We might be doing a lot of dashing with him, but that's probably not the greatest thing. So. And then we have Kate Smith, our support. Again, she shall be renamed soon. Just like it sounds, the support class provides that intangible edge our squads need. They make everyone around them better. Yep, so our support start off with a smoke grenade, but later on they'll get abilities that'll help them Commander heal, sort of. Yes, yeah, Commander to the research Yes, lab. I know there's stuff in the research labs. I will get to that. This is going to be a long episode. But yeah. So how am I going to be naming these guys, you say? Well, let's get right to that. Uh, I guess I'll have to head back to the barracks later. The recovered later. artifacts are being unloaded, and the research team is waiting your orders. 
will get started as soon as you give the order, Commander. Yeah, sure. Let's head back to the barracks really quick, so that way I can name our newly promoted soldiers. I have Commander a... to the research labs. Commander to the research labs. Shut up, stupid PA! So yeah, since I'm expecting my first Iron Man classic run to go horribly, horribly wrong, I am going to be naming the naming the everyone on my team after my favorite baseball and all my promoted units after my favorite ba after mem past and present members of my favorite baseball team the New York Mets so Igor a sniper long range so let's get someone from the outfield I'm thinking Carl was, let me see I'm trying to remember it was Carlos Bel Carlos Beltran I believe was uh, outfield I might be wrong there. And yeah, you get to see his whole load out here. Blah, blah, blah. Pistol. Frag grenade. Uh, yeah. Carlos Beltran. Out, outfielder. So then, in that case, we shall customize. Rename him. Commander to the research Shut up, PA! Labs. Commander to the research labs. Beltran. I'll get to the stuff the PA is talking about later. Of course, we can't do that with the females, so I'm just going to be naming them after players' wives. Uh, let me see. Good catcher. Good catcher. Uh, we can... Let's see. I, I actually have, like, uh, I have my... Ta Commander I have to the research lab. Shut Commander up! To the research lab. I ha have, like, a, I have my Nexus 7 here. I'm just open to Wikipedia, and let me see. Who has good defense? Jose, uh, David Wright? Is David Wright dating? Is David Wright married? That's my big question. David Wright, oh, footballer, politician. I did not know there were so Commander many rights. Commander to the research labs. Commander to the research labs. Shut up, or I will kill you. I will kill you and everyone you own, you know. So let me see here. Well, you, th you think they'd kind of mention uh, mention marital status on Wikipedia? No, uh, personal. There we go. That that would actually work. Commander to the research labs. Commander to the research Shut labs. Shut up. You know what? No, but he has a brother named Steven. I'm going to make him a gender bender and ma name, rename him Stephanie. So, yeah, this is going to be... So, yeah, sorry, Stephen Wright, but... Uh, I have no idea how to spell Stephanie. So, yeah, sorry, Stephen Wright, but apparently you're now a woman. And, uh... Alright, enough of that. Now to the research labs to shut up the damn PA. Hello, Commander. My name is Dr. Farlan. I oversee the research labs. This is where all of XCOM's research and development takes place. We have already begun analyzing the artifacts recovered from our first encounter with the aliens. Based on our preliminary findings, we believe we can use them to develop some new equipment for our soldiers. With your approval, we will begin research immediately. All right, so you get the general idea of the research labs. Yeah, shut up. So yeah, you get the general idea of what we do here in the uh, in the research labs. We basically develop weapons and artifact and weapons and armor and all sorts of good stuff to help us fight the alien menace. The xenobiology is important for the story elements, but uh, essentially what I really want to do is what I, I want to either invest in weapon fragments, so that way we can build new weapons, or alien materials so we can build new armor. I want to get the armor started ASAP. There's some d very dangerous things that'll be coming soon, and I want to make sure my guys are fully armored for that. Better weapons would also be good then, but really survival is more important, as we witness firsthand on Iron Man Classic. So let's begin project. Commander, I realize our troops have to put their own survival first, but every alien we use explosives against is one less opportunity to recover new artifacts. Yes, yes. <sighs> German women. I've actually never dated a German woman. There aren't that many German women in New Jersey. So now let's head down to engineering because we want, got to see see what the engineers are up to. Ah, Commander, I was wondering when you'd be stopping by. Welcome to engineering. Anything they can dream up in the research labs, we can build it here. Speaking of which, Dr. Valen has just sent us some new schematics. With your approval, we will begin fabrication. 
So yeah, as you see here, this is where we buy stuff to actually build, to actually, for our survival. So, an iron, on my Iron Man normal run, these didn't cost a hundred a pop. Ouch! Might be because I actually took started in the U.S., and thus they can develop satellites cheap. Anyway, first thing we want to do, we want to, we want to build a bunch of satellites. We want to stockpile these sons of bitches. Yeah, I know, not enough uplink capacity. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Commander to mission control. Commander to mission control. I'll get there! I'm gonna destroy this PA. And then we also want to build some med kits because obviously survival is kind of important. We, however, they cost 50, they cost 25 a pop, and we only have 42 left. 42 seems to pop up everywhere I go. I swear it's like my life is eternally linked linked to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So yeah, we got our two satellites and being built. We got we got a med kit for one for our soldiers. Let's head to the barracks and give that to Stephanie. Commander right. To mission control. Commander to mission control. Shut up! I will murder you. All right now. Stephanie Wright has her med kit. Uh, Carlos is going to be pitching with the, pitching with the uh, good old, with the good old uh, frag grenade. We'll be getting better stuff for him eventually, uh, really, really eventually. But for now, uh, well, we can't make our way down to the situation room that hasn't unlocked yet. So they want us to head to mission control. Okay, fine, fine. We'll do just that. And they have no nothing to tease us off with. So what is it that we do in Mission Control? Well, you'll see soon enough. We will be... There will be a good bit of information. I feel like this episode's gone on pretty long, but I hope it does a good job explaining what to expect in the future. But for now, well then, well, since we were told to go to Mission Control, I want you to meet the globe... What, I, what I'm going to call the Globe of Mortality. What does it do? We'll find out next time. Until then, everyone, I'm Dave, and you are dismissed. Take care.